Um, first of all, I just want, want to give a big thank you to Fiona Mutesi, AKA the queen of Catway. She is, you know, an Ugandan chess champion and um, an incredible woman who is also a student at Northwestern, North, sorry, at Northwest University. Um, and she's going to graduate in May. So has done so much for the game of chess and beyond it. Fiona, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, um, let me get this started with asking you a question. I'm sure you get a lot, but tell us a little bit about what it was like to see yourself on screen in the Disney movie, The Queen of Catway. Um, I'm going to give you the same as I always give to everyone. I, I think for me, the first time I was so excited coming from a humble background whereby I no one knew me. I didn't know anyone in my life or so. I just grew up in the slums. That's the only place I knew in my life, you know. And then coming just in Hollywood and moving just on the red carpet, I'm like, I don't, I didn't know what was going on, honestly, because by the time the Queen of Katu was filming, like they filmed it back home in the slums itself. And like, I didn't know even the actors themselves. Like I knew Lupita, but I didn't know how much bigger she is. All of those people were acting. I didn't know how big they are until the day of like red carpet. I'm like, wow. Yeah, it was just so crazy. And then um, during that time we had uh, to go to the movie, I mean, to the movie theater. And anyways, we just started watching the movie, but then as I watched, it, it's just, it was just weird watching the person acting into me. I'm like, that is like more like my life. And I'm like, wow, it just brought a lot of memories and I was crying the whole time. Uh, but also the actor, her name is Madina, uh, the one who acted in me. So we're just like, like we, we, we're just touching each other and then we're crying all the time and she's crying because her story is more like of my story but for her she's I mean, like she's a dancer but it's more like the same so we are all crying but up to now I can I can say uh, it's just unbelievable and like I'm so honored and I'm so humbled to just have that in my life because a lot of people cannot like a lot of people have done a lot of stuff but then they don't have that you know that piece uh, but just having a movie at my age, I feel like I'm so blessed and uh, I'm so thankful in my life. Um, which scene, you, you mentioned that you cried a lot when you first saw it, which scene was like the most moving of all to you? Um, I think the most scene for me is the floods. The, the floods, if you remember that scene, it's, it, it just brings a lot of memories for me because um, back home like a lot of people who don't have like money to rent like in the good places you have to rent a house in the slums so my family was one of those people always and whenever it rains it takes out like it floods like a lot of like people actually die from it so during that time like just watching that it just brought back the memory to me that my brother actually was almost dying just because of that like i i i, I don't put it on my sister like what she did to leave him but it was more like like it just brought memories to me like, oh, I've, I, I, I've watched a lot of people dying into that. Cause I remember one of my closest friend actually died into the water and I was seeing him going and we could, no one could save him, but he was going. Otherwise, if you had stepped in the water, everyone would go. So yeah, it is, it is one of like my hardest memory when I'm watching just the movie during that time. Oh, that's, like, I'm so when I, whenever I'm watching it, I make sure I skip that part in my life. Oh, but, wow. Yeah, it's a normal one, yeah. Mm. So you said one of your one of your close friends. Yeah, died. he died. Oh. Yeah, we were about like eight years, and we are playing soccer on like a side, but it was raining. But then the drainage was like like was full, and then the ball went into the drainage, and he wanted to go for it, and then he slipped and went into the water. He fell into the water, and no one could rescue him. Oh my god! So, I'm so yeah. sorry. I know it happens. Like it's a normal thing back there, but yeah. It's something up to now, like I like even like watching the movie, I'll skip that part of the movie. <laughs> but yeah. Well, what about the chess parts? I wanted to show um, there's so many good chess parts, but yeah. I as we are, of course, chess nerds in the girls club, we yeah. do try to look at the exact positions that were played um, in the chess games. Yeah, um, um, so all of the games that we have played, like that's why the movie is really like 98% accurate because most of all the games that we have played in the movie, those are my games that I've played before, like in Olympiad and most of my tournaments. So if you look at the games, you, you can just follow, if you watch the movie, you just know like, oh, this is her game and go back. Um, yeah, so um, that's why like I'm excited. I feel like the movie really represents a lot of, about my life 
than like a drama kind of because you know how this is disney so uh, i was so happy that it put it just portrayed me a lot instead of other stuff yeah we have a lot of people saying they're so sorry about the loss of your friend what was their name so that we can remember them uh his name was adam mm -hmm. yeah but yeah that was when i was eight but yeah it's it's one of the memories like i just don't want to bring in my life but you know things happen and you have to get back again in life yeah and um we will we will certainly think of adam and now let's take a look at one of the chess scenes from the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to share my screen right now. Mm -hmm. Benjamin, play. Checkmate. What? No. This is not possible. We have a new champion. So how would you evaluate this position? By the way, it's black to move. It's black to move here. And I'm going to make... Um, Gonna make Adia co-host. Adia, hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Adia is our, our women's committee chair, Fiona. Because we have a lot of people coming into this class. Okay, so what do you think of this position? All right, okay. So tell us a little bit about this scene, Fiona. What did it evoke for you? Yeah, I actually don't remember the game. <laughs> I'm trying to oh. remember. <laughs> What about the scene? Did the scene kind of like evoke uh, some memory you had of, of beating um, a Benjamin in another contest? Uh, yes. Um, so um, when I went to the academy, I'll, I'll just tell a story about this game. When I went to the academy, um, we, they didn't have a lot of girls. They had like a few girls and um, you know, like in Uganda, like uh, being a woman is more like being an underdog, like no respect, nothing. They think you cannot do anything at all in life. So when I went there, everyone was more like, oh, she, she's not gonna go anywhere, you know, like you, you're just gonna also be like other girls after some time you're gonna quit. So it was more like that kind. So I actually became serious at the game and I just went, wanted to win because I, I kind of thought a way like it's, the game is gonna be like, the only way in my life otherwise if it wasn't the game i'm not gonna survive uh so i started like practicing really hard and uh before this game i think you can see uh, they, they didn't show the scene another scene they removed it they deleted it but this, there was a scene whereby i had to talk to my coach before and then my coach helped me to train more and then i go back and i beat all of the guys including benjamin benjamin was one of the best during that time uh, but like the best one was Josephine, I think later I play him, but right now I play Benjamin. And when I beat him, he cried. They show that in the movie, cried. And um, for him, all of them, that was the first attack. They're like, oh, she's coming for us. We're gonna like join all of us to start like coming for her, you know? Like they started taking me for serious. And also my coach started seeing, taking me for serious. So it's like, oh, she needs more attention. That's the time I got more attention in terms of training more and like being also involved more in Twitch itself. Um, but yeah, that's why maybe the game, the scene itself reminds me. Uh, but then after that scene, I, I play another boy who was like the strongest at Academy and that guy, his name is Joseph. He quit that day actually after chess. He never came back because for him, a girl could not beat him. So I beat him and he, that was bad for him. It's like, oh, if you beat me, it's bad luck in my life. I'll never go beyond this game like anywhere with this game. So he quit up to now, actually he never played chess again because of that. So, which is so weird, but yeah, that's what the scene reminds me of. Oh my God. Wow. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a great scene. And 
Um, so far we have white is winning, but black has a few tricks to try, um, which is uh, excellent. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm sure some of you remember what was played in the game here. Um, what a black play here. You want to just type it in the chat. Somebody type in the chat what Fiona played. That's right. That's right. Good job, guys. B3, classic breakthrough. And now what should white do? Well, that's not very specific, Anya. <laughs> Take or Sophie, that's even less specific. Cicera says White should resign because they know Fiona is going to win. Um, Sahana, you want to you want to unmute yourself and try? Well, is it this like the Russian uh, the Russian school board position? Oh, I didn't know it was called that. I didn't know it was called that, but that sounds that sounds right. Mm. Um, but Lila has a great point that white should take with a C pawn um, in this position, not the A pawn like Benjamin played in the game um, because that got him into some trouble. After A takes B3, um, what did Fiona play now? C3, right, and it makes a difference. Normally the breakthrough position, apparently it's called a Russian schoolboy position. I didn't even know that. Like the idea is that even here you can go A3 and then you can try to push this pawn up the board and win. But the problem is, yeah, right? The, the, Fiona was saying that the king just comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So um, Benjamin instead took this way. And now what happened guys? And then we have checkmate. Nice final checkmate where you see the knight and the bishop um, are useless. So I, I, I don't know, but for me, I was thinking that this game showed your fighting spirit because you were in a bad position and you just kept fighting um, until you won the game anyway. And that, that theme actually comes up a lot in the movie that like you just fight no matter what the situation is. Yeah. Um... I'll say yes, but also I feel like that's part of my life. I've been just fighting ever since I was a child. <laughs> so I'm kind of an aggressive like player that I feel like that's also reflected into my life. Like if I start the game, I just want to attack, attack. I just want to go after the end, I'll be fighting. But I think it also sometimes is part of the way you raise or like your life is. But I think, yeah, personally, I, I just real, I've been realizing it because when I go back to all my games, I just see like, I'm so aggressive. I just go until up to the end. Um, like I have just a fighting spirit. Even if like I'm losing or anything, I'll just go beyond it. But like it just shows like a lot of hope. Like sometimes like never give up. Like this game itself, it shows don't give up. Come on, fight to the end. Um, you never know. It just can open up for you. You know, you don't know what your opponent always what is thinking. You know, so we never like resi resigning should not be part of the game. Just go up to the end. At least be meted. Like, what are you losing if like you're gonna be married. It's the same sometime, but you're gonna give yourself a chance to try. Yeah, and this is a brilliant example of that because, yeah. you know- Because a this lot of game looks like a loss already, like it's lost. And good job, by the way, because a lot of you guys voted for white is winning, but black has a few tricks to try, which is excellent. And um, you, you know, the metaphorical power of chess is so great in this movie. And you talk about how um, from chess to your life, you were also always fighting. What do you think the best um, life example of that was? Like in my life? Or in the movie, yeah, about your life, yeah. Um, I think uh, in my life, it just reflects the time where, but it's not shown on in, in the movie or anywhere, but it reflects the time where I was homeless with my family and we are living at the streets. But during that time, even the time whereby we did not have food, we did not have uh, a roof over us, but we never gave up. Like my mom and us, all of us, we never gave up. Like all the coins we collected, we made sure like she, she like instead of eating, the, getting something to eat, we already like we collected all of the money so that we, we find something to do so that she gets like income instead. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I don't really see, um, resigning in my life i know just fighting towards the end until like when it's over and over yeah beautifully beautifully stated i wanted to show 
um, a clip from the, uh, the part where you went to your first Olympiad in Russia. In Russia, yeah. Slow it down. Think it through. Then you will see the traps coming. Sukali wa bana tuna gulomulala. Sukali wa bana tuna gulomulala. Welcome to Russia. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about that. That was um, your first trip to Russia. Was it your first trip abroad to, I mean, uh, outside uh, the out continent? Out of Africa. Yeah. yeah. That was my first trip out of Africa. And it was, it was just excitement um, for me because I'd never been to snow <laughs> and all of that. So the first time when I was told we're going to go into snow, I was like, dang, I'm excited. Because all I thought is like ice, you know, just ice, all of that that I didn't know, like, I was just excited to feel the feeling of how to be there. But like next thing they show, like they, they show that like the feeling, like you want to like feel it. But yeah, I was freezing the whole time. I was really cold. Um, but I remember going into the game for the first time. And like, because that, by that time, like back home, I was just winning and I was the champion over the girls. And also like, guys like the boys under 20 years I was like the champion so I go in and I'm like oh, I have to beat them because I had that confidence I'm like if I've been winning home I'm gonna just win here like I'm gonna just sweep everything and my first like my first actually was it my first person yeah the first person I play it was she was from Canada and she just <laughs> she just killed it like she just beat me within like a few moves I'm like like I was out of what to do. The, like I felt like whatever I was thinking about, she had already thought about it. And I'm like crying. I'm like, inside me, I'm crying. Like I, I try to move and do other stuff so that I forget about the game, but it's not happening. Uh, so I had to just sit and like, it was my first time to feel like the pain. I don't know. I don't know if other people feel it, but like that was my first time to feel the pain because I had a lot of confidence in me that I had, I got this pain inside me, like, wow, I actually have been training for nothing. But it also like, I, I, I wish like I'd run out after some time and then I had to recompose myself, which helped me to understand that I wasn't the best at all. Like I needed more training to get somewhere, you know? And also, um, well, like I, I did not have like any training, honestly, like, um, I never like practiced on the computer and my, like I had no books, any theory. I didn't have any theory. So I was just like, if you see all my games I play, I was just playing according to my instincts only that. Like I didn't have any, anything like any platform. So this really helped me to know like I needed more. I needed to practice more if I want to like be part of this game. Yeah. And what was your like most memorable because obviously getting to travel across the world for chess must have been a remarkable experience. Yeah. Um, here in this clip, they show how astounded you guys are by the snow. I know, yeah. I think the most memorable thing for me, one of the games I played, actually, I lost the game, the, the game I just played, the, 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 the girl I played from Canada. I liked that game because it helped me to understand, like, oh, don't, don't, don't be, it's more like I had a proud in me already, I had that confidence in me. It wasn't like it didn't ad, 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 like disappear, but it's more like the game made me stronger in my life, just in general in my life, like I needed to do more. But not only that, like I happened to meet the girl after, it wasn't like playing, I think I went to Canada. Yeah, when the movie came out, actually, it came out in Canada, Toronto. So she came <laughs> at the movie and then I find her there and I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> she's the one who beat me. She was just excited to meet me. She's like, oh my God, we should exchange phone numbers and all of that. I want to talk to you. And she's like, you remember me? I'm like, yeah, I remember you, the girl who beat me. And she's like, yeah, and they have just shown me the movie, you know? <laughs> I still remember her up to now because she made me understand like, oh no, um, you know, you, you have to be also, I don't know, you have to be humble. Um, and accept like oh yeah also, also accept to be hoped because after like playing this girl game like the girl had to help me she actually helped me after the other games like to prepare and all of that which i really appreciated so yeah that's one of my memorable game into this tournament 
Yeah, and we are going to show one of your games from mm -hmm. that tournament, one of your memorable games, mm -hmm. which was um, you can tell us a little bit more about it. Actually, okay. um, let me let me share the screen and you can tell us about your opponent and at what point in the event this happened. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, this game is, I, this was one of the games I played, I think it was around like the fifth round, like I had zero. Everyone was beating me because I was playing like board one and um, I didn't know what I was playing at all. I, I didn't know any lines at all. Like I didn't know when you say Queen's Gambit, I'm like, what is even that? What does it mean, you know? I was lost when, when, I, I, when I arrived at this tournament, I was just lost. I felt like I, was, I knew only my chess and other people knew every chess. Like I don't know anything during that time. So I was just playing my everything, uh, like just according to my instincts, like what is right, what is wrong, like that kind of thing. Uh, but the game itself, uh, I played uh, a girl, I mean a woman, she's a woman, because right now she's 76 years old. Uh, she uh, She's from Bangladesh. She was playing for Bangladesh and she's a woman I am right now. Um, yeah, she has been playing um, Olympias for a long time, like since 1980s. Uh, so yeah, this is one of the people I played, but I don't know how I won the game. Because if you look at the game, honestly, like the opening and all of that, it doesn't look good until like when I when I got like, I don't know, when I got like the the position, like you can go ahead and play if you want to talk about it. Well, I'm just going through the first few moves quickly. It's yeah. uh it's like a joke, it's a Philidor Joko piano type mm -hmm. variation where you're basically avoiding theory, which you said was customary for you, right? Because I know, yeah. But I think also the play, like the people who are playing me that time. I don't know, because they were pushing moves and I think they were asking themselves, what is she playing? That's not the way you're supposed to respond, you know? Because most of us, like on the Olympiad, you have like, because we play like one game a day and you have a lot of time to prepare for your opponent. So even like the preparation, I didn't know how to prepare myself because I didn't have any computer and other people were like preparing, like you get your opponent and start preparing. You have like almost eight hours to prepare for your opponent. Like what they are playing and everything. But for me, I had always to come with zero knowledge about what I'm doing. So I'm just playing during this time. And like, I think they were also asking, what is you playing? Like this, this is not like how it's supposed to go. So sometimes it's like good because I kind of lost them in the way like they expect you to respond differently and neither of what they expect you're gonna respond, you know? Um, but it kind of also affected me a lot that I didn't know. Now I found this to be a really interesting move, Bishop E6. And I, I think it's really important because um, a lot of people uh, get confused when there are captures and there are choices whether to take or not. So um, in this position, her opponent, Fiona's opponent here, had to decide after this move by Fiona, Bishop E6, whether or not to capture or not. Um, so I'm asking you guys, what do you think? Do you like playing Bishop takes a E6, yes or no, and why? And we will call, well, we'll call on someone, because why not? Um, I'll call on at least one person, uh, maybe two. Um, uh, Zara, how about you? You want to answer first? Go ahead. Um, I don't really like this one because um, like if if we trade that out, then then the pawn could easily just take your bishop and it's gonna be like wacky a little. Okay, let's let's keep that in mind. Um, let's answer um, one other person, uh, Cicera. I chose I didn't like it because after BX E6 and then FX E6, black can just start playing D5 and take like major control in the center. Okay, Fiona, what do you think um, as you obviously play the game? I know, uh, I think during this time when I was playing the game, what came into my mind always like, oh, I'm gonna, cause like the first thing I like, they had told me is the center, like get out like, cause I thought like, oh, right now is trying to, you know, to control, like I'm gonna remove the bishop. And the first thing when I remove the bishop, I'm gonna exchange the pawn and I'm creating that look like, you know, that, the, the, the opening of the look and it's gonna help me and it did within this game it did help me during that time but i don't think if you're really not ready for that kind of open whatever like open and also that pawn it looks like a loss a loss like it's not a lost pawn it looks like i don't know how to say that in english <laughs> sorry but it looks like just in the middle and it has no any protection at all 
after taking after taking yeah so it's more like wow it's it's, it's gonna fall at any time like you know but at some point it looks like it's gonna be also like the, you're making the center more strong with it but mm-hmm. still you know what i'm saying yeah yeah there's pros and cons it's a weakness mm-hmm. but it defends the center as zara does, said yeah. i think it's either an isolated pawn or a backward pawn Mm, it's not exactly an isolated pawn it's doubled pawns not really backward either Mm -hmm. um but actually in my opinion this is normally good for black for strategic reasons so if white wants to justify doing this capture they should follow up really aggressively exactly yeah if they really do well like and fall like aggressively then they actually get you but yeah it's risky though yeah, it's risky because Fiona could end up being better if you don't follow up well. And that is what happened in the game. So considering that, what should White play here? Um, Sarah, did you want to say? I was going to say something about what I, I about the Bishop E6. Um, sure. What did you want to say about it? I like it for Black because you get a very open file, almost an open file with your Black Rook. And I usually play that. If, I... I usually play that if I don't have like, if I'm black and I don't have like bishop g5, or sorry, in this case, bishop g4, I usually play bishop e6 because if I, if the person takes and I take, I have a good almost open file. Yes, that's true. We did talk about that. So the open f file looks nice for black, but what should white do right now, Ananya? I think that um, white should go d4 to, um, I know it gets rid of the double pawns, but the double pawns is actually good for black because it helps them go d5. So that's why d4, and then you can attack e6, which is a weak pawn. Um, Like, if they go e5, then you can go knight d6 with a fork. Yeah, I, th- I think that would have been a great move, d4, and that would kind of highlight this not being as much of a weak, this being more of a weakness and a strength, but mm-hmm. her opponent did not do that. They did queen to e2. And then anybody guess what Fiona did here? I'm going to end this poll. Very nice, Emily. She did play d5. Beautiful. Really well done. Um, Fiona, what were you thinking now? Mm-hmm. At this point, um, yeah, I think I'm I, like, my thinking is more like taking more of the center, but I know like at this point she is like, she may make a mistake. And like, I was coming for the double, like to double the phone, like to take like um, the D, uh, the D4 pawn <laughs> because I was still like new into this. I'm like, that's gonna be so good. So I'm gonna come for that. So that was one of my thinking, but at the same time I was playing also she takes it. When she takes it, I still have my center, like my pawns like are still good for me. And she did take, and of course Fiona is now threatening white. Yeah. What color Very... is Fiona? I, I am black. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, she's black. Um, and d4 is a very dangerous threat. So now white play d4. But um, it's a little different than when Ananya suggested playing it because black now has like a lot of cool activity. I'm going to go through these next few moves a little quickly. c5, beautiful. And now um, it looks like white only has one move. Like this would be completely crushing. But white did find, white is a WIM, strong player. So they did find the one move to avoid, um, you know, having to resign. Yeah. How they do it. I'm not sure if people's hands are up for this one or from the thing before. Oh, actually, that's true, Ananya. Maybe she could play queen c4 check first. Yeah, but even if they play queen c4 check, like the next move they play has to be the same one. Yeah. Oh, knight b5. I, I like the knight. It, it, it looks really better for me. Yeah. Knight b5 is what your opponent played so that now if you take on e3 they get to take on d6 right they can yeah it's the kind of protecting their case yeah so now if you want to play knight e4 and i think this was one moment in the game where your opponent missed an opportunity what should yeah. white play here um anushka um i was thinking bishop into b4 yeah bishop d4 looks like a really good move yeah, it looks really good. 
because let's say we take back, um, it's just a nice little zwish and zug, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but your opponent took thinking that like this would be an okay position for them because they've restored material equality. But now I have an important question to ask you guys. Um, think about this one. And, and Melina said Bishop takes H6. Um, yeah, that probably works also. I think Bishop takes D4 might be even stronger though, Melina, because then the pawn on D4 is weak at the end as well. So this is a classic question in chess. Is this the Jason or in general? In, 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 in general, but especially in this position, which minor piece do you prefer, the knight or the bishop? And I will call on a few of you to tell me why. Somebody, people who I haven't called on yet, I'll start with. Um, Sujana, what would you say? Um, I would prefer the knight. Like, I like the knight because it can make forks. And they're also nice to, like, in the end game, usually. Okay, that's that's good, Sujana. But I am looking for a question, an answer that's specific to this position too. Um, Marissa, what about you? Um, so I actually also, or well, I was kind of gonna say in general too, but I guess in this position, um, I'd say they're about equal. Um, I mean, the bishop kind of there's more pieces on the dark square so the bishop might be able to like do more and stuff but um yeah yeah um let's call on one more person at least uh what about violet um i like the bishop here because the position is like fairly open and there's pawns on opposite sides of the board all right um well let me reveal what and by the way i'm sorry this poll is about this specific position not about the bishop or the knight in general if it's in general, you know, then the bishop's a little bit better, uh, according to, you know, the great computer programmers. <laughs> but if you're playing blitz, like so many people are doing online now, you know, the knight might have an edge because it's very tricky. So, hey, um, I was talking about this position. Fiona, do you want to give your thoughts? I don't know. Since I played the game, I was still like, right now, the knight is really better in this position. I will not give up my knight. Um, I don't know, because I feel like it it can go everywhere. Right now, the bishop has no, I don't know, because I have a lot of open lines already. Um, with my looks, they are going to come in, so the knight might be able to really help me a lot than just taking, because when I take the bishop, it, it's not going to help. Come on. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, because, like, I understand what Violet's saying, that it's a relatively open position. And if you could get your bishop to like e5 or something, like, sure, maybe the bishop's better than the knight, but yeah. you can't. I mean, you can't really put the bishop anywhere good now. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it would be like, it's actually like opening, open one for a uh, black right now. It's not like really open for white that much. Yeah. Um, it's a great example though, because like it's it, not yeah. that obvious. A lot of times when they show us positions where like the knight's better than the bishop, it's like some exaggerated situation where the knight's like on e3 and the bishop's like on yeah. h2 and blocked by a pawn on g3. Yeah. I usually <laughs> prefer playing with bishop than knight, <laughs> honestly. I love bishops more, but yeah, within this position, I, I would prefer the knight. Um, yeah. Than, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think this is this is a really great example. The other problem is, I think, and, and I think this is something that's a little subtle about this. Yeah. If you look, if you look at um, was it um Elizabeth Spiegel's lesson a couple of weeks ago about open files? Um, you're gonna start to realize, and well, let's see what Fiona did. This move, by the way, is a great move, Queen F6. What's happening is she's gonna get this open file before White. And notice the power of the knight, it, it, because if it wasn't for that knight, you know, rookie one um, and rookie eight wouldn't be possible maybe because perhaps queen takes e8 would, would give you the, uh, the queen for two pieces. So already the knight is showing itself not only as an attacker, but as a defender, right? Yeah. So the further of that is what would black play now? Let's see in the chat, maybe. 
as we see kind of this game unfold so har harmoniously. Yeah, Rook A8 says Cicera. Um, yeah, a lot of people just say Rook E8. Um, Fiona, which do you feel like is better, Rook on A to E8 or Rook on F to E8? Uh, I would prefer look, <laughs> look at it in this position. Yeah, because you, because you, because you normally like you play rookie eight because you want to put this work on D eight. But here, Fiona played rookie eight. Yeah. Because this guy, right? There's still pressure here. So the queen had to move. And um, Emily, excellent. And now, and now what? And what were you thinking now, Fiona? Were you already thinking that you were going to win this game or you just liked your position? Uh, I don't know. I don't think I was like thinking that I'm going to win it. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I think I was just liking my position because I just had like a, a lot of space uh, in my uh, side. And I feel like I have open files, like I can do much with it compared to white. So I was trying to take an advantage of that. I'm like, I'm going to do this. Uh, maybe to help me take the pawns and all of that. I was, just, there was just a lot that was going on, but I know the more like, I, I knew the my squeeze, I'm, I'm squeezing right, that it doesn't have space. That is more advantageous for me because I'm gonna like get it. Yeah, it's very fun to play this position. That's what everybody's saying in the chat. I agree. Um, and you just play this nice little quiet move, rookie seven. Just trying to like slowly improve your position. Love it. I know. I feel like at this point I was playing um, because I'm trying to to play the position. Like I'm playing because I wanted, I, I, I don't know, I wasn't sure if like the other look is going to pile the looks or if the other look is going to come into, you know, if uh, the F file. But also uh, I'm trying also to delay, to just make like wasted moves also at that time so that it makes a mistake because I know like they are running out of like moves at that point. Um, yeah. Like now, you see that later, yeah. Now that they play queen g3, you got to play this move that you wanted to play with a tempo, right? Mm -hmm. And they play queen d3. And you know, the, the, the cool thing about this that I think kind of harkens back to the question of knight versus bishop is it's kind of cool that your opponent has h3 in here because now f3 is always going to be really woeful because their dark squares are going to be crushed. Yeah. Right. So it, it's it's not an outpost night technically, but in a kind of weird way, it, it functions as an outpost night because F3 is undesirable. Right. So you played knight C3, kind of sinking the teeth of the knight even further into the position. Yeah. And um, another quiet move. Were they in any time pressure in this game, by the way? Or do you recall? Uh, I don't think so because during that time, all I knew is just playing like, I was just rushing. I could not even like, I don't know. You know, like Olympiad, we have a lot of time, like a lot of time. Like you can play a game for like five hours. So no, I wasn't at the impression at all. Like I was just playing, I, I, like I, I used to play so fast. I wasn't like thinking during that time. Like I just play whatever comes into my mind. Um, King H8 also looks like a really nice move, getting your king out of the way. And they finally felt like they needed to play F3. Probably they were worried about Knight coming back to E4 and taking on F2 or something. Uh, but this caused them a, a lot of issues later. And, and this is beautiful because as soon as Fiona realizes that the F pawn is not doing any work for her anymore, what does she do? She switches to the E file, which is really the open file in question. This is a beautiful kind of continuation of Elizabeth's lesson. You know, if you weren't here for that session, you can maybe rewatch it um, and look at these beautiful rooks. Yeah. Gorgeous. And now um, you sunk your teeth in with rook E3. That's an outpost rook. <laughs> nice to see it. Okay. And I think I have a poll here because there's a lot of juicy options looking now, right? Yeah. A lot of options. So let me make sure this is the right position. Yeah. What would you do here? Oh yeah. Adia says we talked about the outpost works with Elizabeth too. Yeah, it's true. Great opportunity to um, review that lesson. Evie or is it Evie? I, I'm sorry. I, I think you told me and I forgot. It's Evie. That's what I thought. Okay. Evie. Yeah. So I said 
queen f4 because it's advancing the queen. It's putting it in a better spot. And um, I just think that looks. You like that. Okay, perfect. Let's keep moving and ask somebody else. Anastasia. I'm really sorry. That was an old hand. Okay, no worries. Tori. Um, I chose knight e2 check because if you go uh, king f2, then you can do queen h4. And if you do g3, then you take with the queen and then that's checkmate. And if you go h2, then you can go um, queen f4 and the same thing happens. And then finally, if you go king h1, then you have knight g3 check. <laughs> yes, Fiona, do you want to tell us about what you were thinking at this point? Uh, it's the same thing I was thinking about, honestly, that I was thinking about playing the knight, because uh, that's that's what I played during that time. I don't know why I played it. I, I, I think I was thinking about, like, because I just saw it's an opportunity that I know, like, they cannot come out of it during that time. Like, this is, like, gone at that point. Like, they can't come out of it. The game is, like, gone. And now if I give you the poll about what you like better, the bishop or the knight, I don't think it's going to be very close, right? Yeah. And uh, yes, this this is like total domination here with the knight because of these weaknesses, right? You came in, beautiful. And then um, you got the fork. And I, I think she um, resigned here, right? No, 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 you actually- no, she did not resign actually. She played it out to me. That's right. That's right. Okay. And then you um, play queen f4. I don't know why it's not making. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you want to do a long, a long, maybe you were trying to checkmate with a pawn. Because I would have really. I don't know what I was doing. I think I did not see that you're supposed to make uh, this checkmate. I, I, I didn't see that at the checkmate in one. I didn't see it. Hey, same result. Queen f4 check, and then you played queen g5. Mate. Yeah. Um, a great game, really instructive too. It's a really clean, instructive game. So this was a, a great victory. What happened after the game? Did you analyze it with your opponent? What did your teammates say? Uh, I analyzed it with my my teammates. Uh, it was like my first actual win. That was like the fifth round, like the, my my fifth round I had played, and I hadn't won any game honestly. So this was like my victory, and I actually they had to take me out for lunch and chocolate because I hadn't won any game. But yeah, this, I don't know. For me, this was, I don't know. I just felt like I went for it, like like whatever. Like, I don't know. I felt like uh, White had chances at some point, but she did not see them. So I had to whatever to, 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 to whatever that weakness more and more. Um, yeah, but I really liked the game. Um, yeah. It's a great choice. I love it. Oh, you had seen it before? Um, I think I'd seen it, but I didn't see how good it was because it, I saw another game of you with like flashier tactics, but this one, you know, it's very strategic. It's very instructive. So I really liked it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just uh, show one more clip and then we'll open up to questions because okay. the movie did a really good job of showing um, two really important relationships in your rise to success mm -hmm. with both your coach and your mother. And so I thought we could just take a quick look at that because they were so beautifully evoked. You give this to your wife from my family. Oh, please, please, no need for that. Thank you. You have done something remarkable. Sebo, you are speaking no sense again. Your children are blessed because they have a mother who will never give up on them. And you did it all alone. I have tried for him. Yeah, thank you. Wow, those two scenes were just so beautiful. Um, so I wanted to show them. Um, Fiona, um, how did you feel about the depictions of your mom in the movie? And how did she feel about it 
and and your coach who I know I know Robert Katendi uh, she likes them honestly um she likes them the part that she likes most I think that really portrays her the part whereby it's like the beginning of the movie when my sister like is taken by the guy and she's like she's defending my sister and she's like she wants to fight it really portrays her so much because she has been so much like she's she's like she's not that kind of a person who like is going to say no to you or anything but she's a mom who's like kind of protective whatever comes like because we have a society whereby i grew up in the community whereby people think like um in the way whereby anyone belongs to anyone you know any other child like they're they're gonna raise like it's more like the community is raising you which is okay but in the way like sometimes they will beat you if you do something wrong or anyone will do that to you uh which was not the scam same case with my mom's like oh yeah you can do anything but don't beat my child or don't do this to my child so she was so protective ever since we kids like sometimes i'll be selling like maize along the slums and if i get like attacked by some people and i know their face i'll bring my mom and my mom will be fighting them like really bad like don't no, never touch my kid and that brought the, her like right now she's 52 but i'm telling you she's still like that kind of a person she has not changed <laughs> like she and my niece, she's a whole festival like if my nieces have like any issues they're into at, at like at school because we grew up in the way like we like humble in the way like um the way we have been raised and like we we, we like respect people so my mom like literally she would know like you started like my kids cannot start any fight so at school like she will go and fight all the people she's like oh no my kids that and that's the way she can protect you kind of so she still does that even after now she's so protective of us um but yeah my mom is so i don't know i just feel like she's done so much for me just to be here uh, and like that one of the pieces like the the, the part you're showing it shows uh during the time whereby because at first when I came into chess, she would not accept me to play chess. And it was because we had either to survive or you go play chess and have fun, you know? Uh, because you have to sell maize. So if you don't go and sell, then where the food is gonna come. So we have like priority during that time. So the priority was more like surviving. And until when my coach comes in, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna give them education. Like I'm gonna take them to school. And this like means a lot to my mom. It means the world because at that time she had no hope that we would ever can go back to school. Like we had tried everything. Until when she gave her, she's like, oh no, we're gonna now try to provide. As long as they have a roof, that's the best thing and food. And which is like, a lot of people go through that. We have seen a lot of homeless people here. You know, all they prefer right now is like food and like just having a roof. Like education at some point is not mattering. But anyway. But after some time when I started like playing chess like seriously and I started winning tournaments, it became more of our uh, our earning, our income. <laughs> like she had to depend on that income because that's the money we used to pay for renting. And then at that time also chess became more like, oh, I liked it, but it's more like oh, survive, surviving. Like I'm gonna play like, I knew I had tournament and sometimes I could not sleep. I'm like, I have to win. I have to win. If I don't win, there's no food for home so that was the way that's when i say like getting that fighting spirit like i have to fight to up to the end like no one is gonna come to our rescue or for my family and my coach was also always there to encourage us like to strengthen us like all the time in my life up to right now actually i talk to him almost every day and he's always there to encourage me like oh no do this let's do this at this point like that but and you yeah. ended up buying a house for your mother in Uganda as well, right? Yeah, yeah. She still lives in that house and she does a lot of stuff actually because it's a big house. Um, it's a big house, but it also has a, a big piece of land. So that big piece of land we have like uh, farming, we're doing farming, we are railing like animals, we have like chicken, cows, goats and pigs, like a lot of stuff. And like most of the time this food, uh, she will grow this food and gives it to like to the people who are homeless or to the academy. Uh, that's what she does right now but she's a pastor so she's more like her time she spends all most of her time like being at church and doing her food so yeah well we're gonna take a few questions i know you have to go soon um but let's start with sarah yeah. my question is how did somebody find you to make a movie about you oh that's a good question um so uh the book there was a book of queen of Katwe. The book is, there's a book that came out first in 2012. The book is called Queen of Katwe, and the book is the one that inspired the movie. 
uh, but then to start how they defined me with the book, uh, because of the way I was raised, I grew up like, you know, I was homeless during the time I started chess. And during that time I was playing tournaments and um, we started like winning tournaments. So we're going for an international tournament, which they show, I think they, like in the movies done and we all win. But all of us, as three of us, we are winning. During that time I, I was still homeless, but we, are, we went international and we played the tournament and I was like in this, you know, it was my first time to be in the hotel, uh, having just a flushing toilet, having food by myself and back home I'm homeless, which was the worst part of my life. And like, I hated that, that, that life, like I hated it. Like during the time when I went, I just didn't wanna go back home. I'm like, this is the best I've ever lived. That might be the best I'll ever, you know? Why should I go back home? So I was crying all the time, but like we won the tournament, went back. So that tournament made a lot of news. Like, oh, wow, these people are coming from the slums. You know, coming from slums more like, wow, they came from slums and actually they became victory. Uh, in their own country and then they go beyond. So it's been used all over the country and actually people started becoming interested in it. So one of the, like the organization that started uh, the chess club in Uganda is based in Virginia, here in Washington, I mean, here in USA. So uh, that's the way the writer got in touch with these people and this, he came to Uganda to write a story. So that's the way all, the whole thing starts like that. But it's just more like, or no one is knows what is gonna happen, you know. So it's kind of a miracle, and yeah, I'm just humbled, honestly. Thank you so much for the question, Sarah. Um, we have another question from Sujana. Sujana, you want to unmute yourself? Sujana, I'll ask your question if you don't have it. If you're not uh, not able to unmute yourself now, um, she asked, uh, "Who do you admire in the chess world?" Uh, whom did I whom do I admire right now? I would say. Uh, I used to like Kasparov, honestly, when I was so young. Um, and, you know, I played with him. Uh, I've liked all he has done, but right now I like Carlson because I feel like, you know, he's young, he comes, and then he's, he was a hardworking person, honestly. And he's so humble. I love him because he's so humble. I've been with him, like, from di to different events. And I don't know, with the Queen of Kato, they show him a lot, and he liked, like, he comes and he's like, oh, I'm glad like they showed all of your games, but he's so humble that he will come with everyone. Like I've been to all Olympiads, but then he will come into the cars and bakers and say hi to people, to, like to different kind of people. And yeah, he's one of my people. Like I'm, he inspires me a lot. He's still like young, but he's so like, you know, he has done a lot. He's so inspirational, but he's still like, he's so humble, which is amazing. So that's one person I really love in my life. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I know he was a really big fan of Queen of Catway. I think when it came out, he yeah. said he loved it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He came almost on all the uh, whatever we had around USA. Um, and it was I, really great. He, what, he said he came to one of the premieres? Uh, he came to a lot of them, a lot of premieres we had. Uh, from Canada, he came to Canada. He went to the one which he had in New York. He, ha he came just around like four of them. Yeah, he's a really good person. Yeah, I love him. Yeah. yeah, a great world champion. Um, yeah, and he's so humble. It's really good always to be humble in life, honestly. Uh, I don't know, just for him being young at that age and being a whole champion, like he has made it and all of that, but being humble in life is the best thing. Like everyone, most of the people, even, most of the people even know are like grown, like they, they are like in their 40s, they still like admire him because of his humbleness. I don't know. Um, Joshini, do you want to unmute yourself? Um, yeah, so um, my question to you is like, um, say you're doing like so well, and then you lose to someone you know you can beat, like, um, what do you do about that? Like, you feel like you want to give up? But what do you do? Uh, you say, uh, like, the person you're gonna beat, or the person you know you, you, you can beat, but then you lose to those people? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. I've been into that. <laughs> that place before. <laughs> I know, like, before it used to really make me, like, really mad in my life. But I don't know. For some reason, I started realizing that's, like, I don't know. That's why, like, you cannot underestimate a person when you're playing them. I, I don't know. Personally, when I'm playing, like, people, like, um, like, in rating, they are more lower in the rating, and I'm going to beat them. Those are the people I'm more scared of compared to the people who, like, are better than me, I know because I feel like they can just come up with anything. They are going to be some so like, 
I don't know, I'm always so scared and I'm shaking. I'm so nervous playing those people because that anything can happen. So most of the time I'm so on guard on every move. Like I, I take my time to think about it more than I take time to think about like a bigger game. And cause you never know, honestly, anything can harm. Like don't, you never estimate anyone. Uh, so most of the time when I lose, I'm like, you know, it's what it is. Um, yeah, I never, like I never do anything. Like I used to cry a lot when I was still young. But I reached at a time when I don't cry, like it's like an opportunity for you to learn like your mistake, especially to the person if like you know you could beat them, then you get and get to know, okay, if I could beat them and I, I didn't know, which means I need more attention, like I need to do more. Otherwise, I'm going to face people who are like bigger than me and I have to play my best. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you should know, I don't know. You should not be like, why I don't cry, do, don't do anything. Just use that, that that opportunity to just go within that game, go and make your mistake. You know where you made mistakes and collect them and come back stronger for another game. Don't ever play a tournament and lose one game and you feel like, oh, I can't do my, I can't go back and all of that. That one game you have lost, it's just one game. Otherwise, it can make you lose other games if you just stuck with it. You just have to leave it at that point. Just go through it and just know it. it's going to make you stronger because you know where your weaknesses are and you're collecting them. So the next time is going to be better, you know. And that's the way life is, you know. Today you make a mistake, but if you look into that mistake, you cannot look do it again because you know it's a mistake right now. Yeah. Um, Zara, your, your sister had a question. She's so cute. Do you play chess yet? And now you got to unmute yourself and ask Fiona your questions, Zara, sister. I don't know what your name is yet. It's Aisha. Okay, Aisha, you can ask Aisha. Is this Fiona going to be in any movies? No, I am not a movie actor <laughs> or an actress. Yeah, I'm not going to be in any other movie. This was a movie about my life and I didn't act it. Uh, they were just acting my life. Um, yeah, and I'm so honored. Uh, maybe at some point they may act my life, like part B or something like that, you know? Um, yeah, that I have to try so hard in my life to make it happen. Well, um, Fiona, we do have one artist here in our class and she wanted me to share um, mm -hmm. some art she um, did of you. Uh, I, oh I yeah, think I, saw, I saw this picture. I was like, dang, that was so beautiful. I just saw it recently. I was like, that's beautiful. Yes. Dang, thank you. Who's this? Um, her name is Vanessa. She's in the class. She's she's one of our grown-up students, but yeah, she oh I think she God. got a couple pictures of you. Yeah. Yeah, I saw them on Google recently when I was like checking on the games and I saw them. I'm like, oh my god those are really beautiful i don't know who made this but it's really cute i like them thank you so much vanessa if you're there um yeah this is so beautiful i love your work honestly um vanessa do you want to say hello and tell us how you were inspired to make these or you might have some audio problems today vanessa is in texas so oh. you know actually anybody on this call from texas um uh much love to you or glad you can make it tonight i know it's been a difficult week um wait can you guys hear me Yes. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, Fiona, it's such an honor to just talk with you. I didn't think you would ever find it. I tried to find your Instagram, but you know, maybe not everybody has an Instagram, but uh, I found your story. No, I have Instagram, but a lot oh, of people are using it. <laughs> there are oh. a lot of Fiona Motuses. Yeah, <laughs> but I have one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but it's so beautiful. I just found it a couple of weeks and my friends were seeing it. It's like, this is so beautiful. How comes you didn't notice there? And I'm like, I have it. I just found it. <laughs> that's so beautiful thank you yeah no problem i mean i grew up poor and i don't want to like presume uh mm -hmm. to know all of your struggles but i'm just so happy you never gave up like it's so inspiring to see how you just keep fighting even though things get so hard and um i found out about other inspiring stories of chess players through jen shahadi she keeps featuring all these you know wonderful women in her instagram and so i started drawing them to kind of you know in some way just kind of honor them even though you know i don't i'm not a grandmaster or any kind of skilled chess player i'm just totally a beginner but just the spirit you guys have is so nice and uh, I, i'm so glad you like the drawing thank you i really appreciate it. i can try to share them on my instagram thank you so much i really appreciate oh no problem it. sure you're really beautiful i love your work yeah thank you so guys 
I love it too, Vanessa. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Um, Sahana, um, I, you know, we only have time for like one or two more, que one question maybe. So can you guys t message it to me so I can screen them before? That'd be super useful. Um, and um, Fiona, I, I also wanted to uh, ask you about how, you know, since you've been in the United States, you have encountered some racism. And I was sorry to hear that. Um, and I hope that, you know, that you still have a very good memory of your time here, your four years in the United States going to yeah. New York West University. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, everything happens for a reason, honestly. Uh, me going through that at school and like the racism part, it happened, but still, I don't know. For me personally, like because of the professor, I, I understood the professor was just ignorant about what was going on. And I found that like really common because I don't know, recently I was talking also to my roommate and I just found like they're just ignorant about where you come from or like things about like what, like your skin or some stuff, you know, sometimes you're just gonna educate them because you know, they have never been there. They have never, most of the people have never traveled. They have never been in Africa. They have, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I might have been, had a chance to come here and that's why I know so much right now about USA. Uh, but most of the people have never traveled to my side. So sometimes it's like I, I have to put myself into other people's shoes to know, okay, this is what they're doing and this is what, but that, like there's some people who like will do it intentionally to make you like feel bad about yourself and hate yourself, uh, which I'm not that kind of a person because I just, I was just raised to love myself, honestly. I mean, it's of whatever that has gone on in my life. Like I've fought way worse things than just racism, you know? Like if I made it from ho being homeless and all of that, like I don't think something can just stop me like that. That's like giving up in my life. So, yeah. Yeah, nothing can stop you, that's for sure. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, still, we want you to have as good a time as you possibly can in the United States because you have so much to teach us. Um, Annalise, um, you, Annalise, do you want to unmute yourself for your question before we let Fiona go? Sure. So my question is, what are, what are your plans to do after college? Uh, right now, I'm actually starting to apply for jobs because I'll be graduating. I'm graduating May. I've been doing business management and finance. Um, so I'm soon graduating. And one other thing is I'm starting an organ. I'm trying to start an organization, which like I'm trying like to think about like the ideas and all of that. But the organization I'm trying to to start is gonna be um. I'm trying because in March is gonna be March 28th is gonna be my birthday. So I'm trying to open it by March 28th. And it's gonna be uh, the voice for the voiceless. I wanna name it that because a lot of people don't have a voice, and it's gonna be about like giving to the people. Uh, like um, I'll post it on my social media, on my Facebook, and all of that. But it's more like we're gonna. I, I'm gonna be helping like a lot of women, like uh, back home, those who don't have like sanitary pads, all of those things like clothing, shoes. Uh, Soakings, that kind of thing. Because recently I was in the store and like we had snow here, you know, when like Seattle never has snow. So I had snow and I was like, oh no, oh God. Like I was just in the store and I'm like a lot of people actually need soakings and gloves. So I like, like I got like a lot of them and I, I just give them out to a lot of people on the, on the like, out, like we are the lords. But it just started make, make me think like, oh, actually I can do more. You know, there are a lot of people like need something but it's like small, you know, it's just small, but I don't know, it's just like, you can just pay $2 or $3, but they will make their heart like happy. Like they will be warm, you know, because of because of that, they were warm, they had soakings, they had gloves and all of that. So that's one thing I'm thinking about and I'm trying to connect with different people so that it happens like so. Wonderful, Fiona. I mean, that's so important. And, you know, let us know about it when you, yeah. um, when you start the organization so that we can make sure to spread the word. Oh, yeah. And thank you. Yeah, I'll share it with you. But yeah, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you so much. I'm sorry everybody didn't get their questions in, but um, we will uh, have links to Fiona's movie and there's a Mad Woman's Book Club for those of you who are teens or grown up. So you might get another chance to meet her. And yes, uh, maybe she'll be back another day, especially when she starts her organization. We would love to have you back to talk to us again, Fiona. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate each of you who asked questions and uh, was involved into the game. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for all the questions you have asked. Uh, uh, please continue playing. Don't give up in your life. Um, you can be better, you know, every day. You just have to take a step of the living that you can do it in life. 
uh, yeah, never lose hope. Yeah, thank you.